Hello and welcome to my AutoCAD training video. In this tutorial, I will deal with a topic which is highly essential for all type of AutoCAD users. In AutoCAD, the concept of block is used to handle with repeatability and associated editing of objects in the most effective manner. The concept of block is so vast and versatile that your knowledge in block will be complete only when you learn different types of blocks such as local blocks, global blocks, nested blocks, dynamic blocks, attributes and external references. After you learn the different types of blocks, you should know the method to integrate and manage these blocks and other objects using a single interface. We can do that using the tool palette. So in this video, I deal with the concept and application of tool palette in detail. Using tool palette, you can systematically organize blocks, hatches and objects such as lines, circles, etc. having various properties set. And this interface will give you easy access to some of the most frequently used objects and commands in AutoCAD. You can access this interface using three different methods. You can go to view menu and you click on tools palette to get it. This is the interface. I'll just close it. Or else you can type the command tp for tool palette to get the same interface. Alternatively, you can press control 3 to get the same result. When you go through the tool palette, you can see that it is divided into various tabs. We have annotation tab, architectural tab, mechanical tab, etc. Suppose if you click on a particular tab, you will see the number of objects which are frequently used. These are nothing but blocks. And suppose if you want a particular item, for example, I want this particular tree to be taken. You can just drag it and drop it onto the drawing. You will get that tree. Hence, accessing an item from the tool palette is very easy. But you can add your own objects and commands to this tools palette. So let's see the procedure to customize this palette. You know that this particular drawing consists of various block definitions. I'll go to home tab and I'll click on the insert button to see the list of all the definitions which I have in my drawing. And I would like to reuse some of the definitions in all my future drawings. In that case, you can create a new palette and you can add these blocks onto that palette. So let's see that procedure. We are actually going to customize the tool palette. I'll just right click and I'll go to customize palettes. And here you have a customized palette interface. On the left side, we have the list of all the palettes which are currently present. And on the right side, we have the palette groups. Each palette can be grouped under a particular group. So what I'll do is I'll create a new palette for that. Just right click over here and click on new palette and I'll give a name. Since I'm going to add a number of blocks here, I'll call it as SAB blocks. A new palette, I'll just rename and I'll call it as SAB blocks. Now you can see a new tab created here. Next, I would like to add a number of custom objects having certain predefined properties. So I'll call it as SAB objects. So again, right click, go to new palette. I'll call it as SAB objects. Okay, so I have created two palettes. Then I'll create a new palette group as well. So right click new group and I'll call it as SAB group. Simply by performing click and drag, I can add these two newly created palettes to the palette group SAB group. So these two palettes are under this particular group. Now I'll just select the group name and I'll click on set current. So I'll be shown that particular group and in this group there are two tabs. One is called SAB objects, another one is SAB blocks. So this is the advantage of grouping a number of palettes. You can independently view the palettes which comes under that group. Now I'll activate the SAB blocks palette. Okay, I'll close it. I would like to add a number of blocks into this. So I'll take for example, this bed. I'll click and drag it over here. So I've got the bed. Now one more block I would like to take from here, which is the door symbol. So that too I can click and drag. Then one more I'll take, let it be the three seater sofa. Okay, then one more I'll take, let it be a single seater sofa. So I've got all these objects here. Now I'm going to add these objects onto the palette. So just click and drag this object and you leave it there. So that block name will appear here. Now similarly, you can click and drag all the rest of the objects. Now just right click 
over here and you can add a separator so you will see one line and you can have a different set of objects meant for a different purpose something like landscaping objects you can take from here I'll choose palm tree I'll also choose a shrub okay these are all landscaping objects and these objects can also be added to this palette optionally you can right click and add a text to provide some information related with objects I'll add a text and I'll call it as landscaping and just drag it I can keep it on top you can also perform copy paste operations on the palette I'll right click over here and I'll copy and right click again and I'll paste okay so you will see the same sofa appearing here I'll drag it and drop it over here so you will see the sofa appearing here I'll right click and I'll go to properties to get the properties related with this object and I'll rename this as a sofa rotated then you can give a scale factor if you want you can give a rotation angle I'll give 180 degree as a rotation okay and I'll give okay so this is nothing but a rotated sofa right click and add a text and I'll call it as furniture so that is my new palette of blocks next we will create objects with some predefined properties and add to sab objects palette I'll close this file this is a new file and I'll create two layers called walls and pillars and for the wall layer I'll assign this particular color and for the pillar layer I'll assign a different color next I'll activate the wall layer as a current layer and then I'll draw a line in it then I'll activate the pillars as the current layer then I'll draw a circle in it next I'll activate the sap objects palette I'll just drag and drop this line into this palette and I'll call this object as walls so I'll right click and rename and call it as walls similarly I'll drag and drop this circle into the same palette and I'll rename it as pillars next I'll close this drawing as well I'll open a new drawing file and here you can see the palettes which you have created now using the walls I'm going to create a wall line now you can see that presently we have only the zero layer when you click on walls you can create lines but when you click on this arrow instead of lines you can also create polylines and other objects so I'll click on polylines now I'll start from this point I'll turn the ortho mode on and I'll give a distance of 750 rightward I'll move through a distance of 1500 then in this direction I'll pick a point then one more then corresponding to this point I'll just track these two points and I'll pick a point and right click and I'll close it let this indicate the wall layout and I'll give an offset command an offset distance of 20 select object and the side okay now I would like to create two pillars here so I'll click on pillars and I'll pick a point over here then I'll give a radius of 12 now I'll take a copy of the same pillar I'll take two copies and I'll keep it here okay now let's check the layer panel you can see that the software has automatically created the pillars as well as the walls layers and the wall is residing in the walls layer and the pillars are existing in the pillars layer so these layers are automatically created with the assigned properties so that is the advantage of creating these objects using the tool palette next I would like to have furnitures inside so I'll click on sap blocks and I'll click on the sofa I'll get sofa here but it's big that's because these blocks are created in centimeters so you have to change the insertion units to centimeters so I'll go to units command and I'll change the unit to centimeters now I'll click on sofa it's perfect now I'll keep a sofa here then single seater here rotated sofa here okay this can be taken to any place you want and you can manipulate it this is how you can make use of the various tools in the tool palette which you create once you create a palette it can be saved and it can be shared among your colleagues so let's see the procedure right click on the palette go to customize palettes just choose the palette to be exported so I want to export sap blocks palette 
So right click and you have an export option. You can choose the folder in which it is to be exported. And I would like to keep it in the desktop for the time being. So I'll save it. The palette files will have an extension of XTP. Now save, just give close. Now when you go to desktop, you can see that this particular palette file is created. It will also create a folder which consists of the images related with this palette. We have a folder here called SAP blocks. Just double click there in images and you will see the list of all the images, which is an integral part of the palette. And such files can be shared among your colleagues. You can keep such palette files on a common shareable folder in your computer network. Delete this particular palette from the list of palettes. So I'll just right click, go to customize palettes again, select the SAP blocks, right click and you can delete it. Go to tools palette and open it once more and you won't see that palette here. Now right click again, go to customize palettes and I'll right click here and we have an import option and you can select that palette from the location where it is stored. Just give open. Now you will see that that palette is reappearing here. So this is how you import a palette file. By default, AutoCAD stores all the palette files which can be obtained by right clicking and go to options. And over here, you will see tools palette file location, which is indicated. And this location can be redirected to any other location. Now you can right click here and click on all palettes to get all the palettes back. Okay, so that's all about the idea of tool palette in AutoCAD. Mm -hmm.